Do you think that uh, Cool Hurt knew what he's doing? No, you don't know what you're doing. When you're at the beginning of something, you don't know what's happening. Something is taken over and you're obsessed and you don't know even why and you don't know where it leads and people around you are saying, you're making noise, what is this? And you, nobody understands what you're talking about, why you're doing what you're doing. They don't see it, they don't, they don't get it. You're doing what you, you're just following. You don't even know what you're following, but you're following something. It's only when you look back that you start to see it becomes clear. So I'm telling you the story, I'm telling you aspects of my story as I look back after 25 years. I didn't know what the hell was happening to me back then. I had no idea. And nobody's, uh, and the people I'm meeting are not, are all uh, minions of systems for the most part. They're not creators of systems, innovators. So that's why I studied all successful people because they're, they're all been in such a position. If you take a Steve Jobs, what is Steve Jobs? It's exactly the same process. So, but, so you, look towards, you look towards people who, in their fields, I don't want to say changed the game, but innovated or brought something new to the table. Because the people around that you meet in everyday life are basic. It's not a disrespect, it's just saying they don't know this. They're technicians, high-level technicians, uh, f philosophers of techniques, but they don't understand where it comes from. When I started, let's say I'll give you an example, I went to osteop osteopathy school, everybody's only concerned with the technique. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, this is how I'm thinking. I'm like 25, 6. I'm like, well, there's a, there's a founder. His name is A.T. Still, Andrew Taylor Still, from I don't, I don't forget where, Albuquerque or K Kentucky, or I forget, no disrespect, Still. Uh, it's been a minute. Kirksville, Missouri? Something like that, right? Down south. So he's a brilliant individual. Through, I don't know, I've never met him because he died a while ago, but I read his books and I'm like, this is a clearly an inspired individual. And my only concern in school is like, well, how do I become like you? How did you get access to that knowledge? Where did you get that knowledge from? And people look at me and it's, they look at me funny. Right? Because they're not interested. They're just interested in learning the profession, learning how to do the techniques so that they can get a job, buy their condos, buy their Audis, and live a simple, decent life. Hopefully, they get laid through the process, and that's it. But they're not seekers of knowledge. So through my journey in going from place to place, tribe to tribe, system to system, your average person that I'm meeting doesn't care. Some are a little more. You always find one, the zealot, who's just going to be like he, telling you like, He's a rep, he's a, how do you say, a representative of that system. And I could spend hours with that person and ask a million questions and they're just like, they know the theory perfectly. It's like the library of the, and I love those cats. But you can't ask, you can't ever think in their presence. You could just ask questions and they'll just repeat, 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 repeat. And if you're lucky, you can meet a higher level priest. It's not necessarily a priest, that means an agent of that knowledge that is a higher level, but you don't have access to them very often. And let's say you do, that person will feel, will like your questions and inspire you, but there's always a limit. Unless you meet somebody at the start, a master, master, which is rare. And if you do, that person doesn't necessarily have so much time for you. <laughs> right? Because I've met some of them. It's like, right, I've, I've, a couple of questions and then they're like, okay, okay, it's enough. Right? Because they're busy and you're unimportant. So... What, that's what I'm trying to say. So you, you don't have a blueprint of how it works. You can look around and see those who innovated in their fields. You can get as close as you can to them, watching documentaries, reading their biographies, autobiographies, reading their books, watching stories of them, to have a sense. What you'd never get a sense of, really, because it's who knows and who speaks like this, like the stuff that I'm talking about, which is so basic, which is esoteric at its essence and how a power grounds itself. In their books, they don't talk like, I will see the power. And No, because of course, this is to be commercialized and they, everything is oversimplified and you know, it's made easy for people. So you have to you extract it, you start to understand it. Once you go through the process, and of course, my, generally I'm a deep guy, so I experience the same things as other people, but I experience it at a whole other level. And then I explain it, I unlock it and make it sound very epic, because it is. 
but your average person doesn't even know that this has necessarily happened to them because they're only perceiving this much. Right? So this is not, this is not something you find every day. And generally, if you survive to tell the story, because you may not survive to tell the story, you may go cuckoo, you may get lost, you may get in trouble, you may quit, you may a bunch of things, then when you look in retrospect, you see how obvious that was. And then you look around and you see the different, all of the different powers who have ground themselves through history or for, for the past 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. It's always the same. So it's not special. It is, but it's not. This is how it works. And it's always organized the same way, but differently according to the kind of power. But it's always, there's always a form of priests or priestesses, and then there's a group of people, and then and slowly it's, and it, and it, it has to, f it follows a certain kind of rhythm. The rhythm of the times and of the needs. So, as I've been uh, told many times by my ex-girlfriend, you're an avant-garde. So you know what an avant-garde is? So let's say you have a fort and then you have the guards a couple of way in front, so they know what's happening way before it happens. So if the fort is the center, the center of knowledge, the the front guards are, let's say, a mile away, just an example. So when shit happens, they know a mile before the rest. So, uh, as she's mentioned, and I, I'll, I'll take her word for it, I have a tendency to be avant-gardist, meaning I know, I'm aware of things way before their time, and which means that when you speak, people are like, and then you have to learn patience. <laughs> That's my favorite, my favorite science. Patience. Anyways, I think we're good with this one for now.